Well, hi ho everybody, and welcome to the Flash Recap Show here on Collider Video, talking about Flash episode... Well, let's start with season two, episode 18, the title of this episode, Versus Flash. My name is John Campia, Ghost of Christmas Pass. I'm here to do Flash today. I'm pretty excited about it because a few people are missing today, so I thought I'd fill in. Joining me at the table, of course, tonight over here is David. David, how you doing? It's great. It's great having you here. It's a Flash from the past. Oh, oh good. I, see you. I see what you did there. <laughs> that was very good. And of course, sitting over here, make your way over from Arrow for the evening is, of course, Anne Campia. Hey, everybody. Happy to be here. We're not talking about Arrow tonight. No. Oh, whoops. You know, by the way, it, I found it very odd that with the little break, the shows, that Flash came back tonight, but Arrow does not come back tomorrow night. That's, isn't that a little out of character for how they've been doing these yeah, little breaks? Don't they usually sync up a little they bit? They do. It's synced, but it's just that when Flash went away for its three-week break, had Arrow an had an episode mm -hmm. on its own without okay. any Flash that week. So now, now we're all caught up. So it's now it's weird, all though. back yeah. in synchronicity yeah. and everything mm -hmm. is good again. Everything's all beautiful. Well, like I said, guys, off the top, we're here to talk about tonight's episode, episode 18 of season two. And I, look, I have really like, I'm not, I'm not a blind Flash fanboy. I'm not like, every episode is the greatest thing ever. I'm mm -hmm. not. But I got to tell you, the, the episodes leading up to tonight, I've really enjoyed. I've been really getting into it. And you could feel like the Zoom stuff is just in that beginning stages, this is all leading in tonight, coming to a head. Mm -hmm. Like you could feel it starting to froth up and you were coming to that, to the head for the show. And I'm just gonna speak for myself here tonight. I was very satisfied with tonight's episode. Look, tonight's episode was not a season finale. It wasn't anything like that where everything, but it was what I would term probably a setup episode. It was a depth episode. You know, because sometimes you get TV shows and a lot of times throughout a long season, you'll get these filler episodes that they're just there to kill time because they can't tell their story stretch over them that mm -hmm. amount of time. What I feel that they've done with Flash quite a bit is that they have not filler episodes, although every once in a while there's a filler episode, sure. But I felt like some episodes like tonight were more depth episodes. Th this was an episode about committing to give you more depth and more dimensions to the various characters and the things going on in the story. And I felt for me, it still gave me that payoff. Now we'll go into our individual likes and dislikes of those things for a second, but just your overall quick impressions of tonight's episode, David. I, I loved it too. I thought it was great. I, I love the, uh, the, the, I know we're talking about like just kind of brief impressions, but the beginning kind of brought me back to Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince opening when uh, was we, we, see the, we see that scene that, where it? we see yeah. Dumbledore visiting, you know, Voldemort at a very young age in the orphanage and just the whole like you know if you would have gone down this road if you would have had a foster upbringing if you would have seen your dad kill your mom in front of your eyes maybe you know you would have turned out like me we're not that much different than of course all the stuff with Anakin Vader we'll get into later but I mean it's just I, I love it and it all comes down as every CW show does Supernatural Vampire Diaries it's all about family it's all about having mm -hmm. that family and the reassurance of that family so I thought they emphasize that well and just like you said, John, it was a great episode tonight. I could almost hear the Joker's voice in the background there. You're just one bad day yep. away from being me. And your general thoughts on tonight's well, episode. Well, I'm glad you brought up filler episodes because coming from Arrow and now talking about Flash, <laughs> when Arrow got back from its initial break, we had two filler episodes that really didn't improve the story whatsoever. You like that B episode, Anne? Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to forget <laughs> it still. I am still amazed that they thought, well, first of all, they go, hey, let's, for, for some throwaway episode, let's go get a villain from Flash, but let's make sure it's a villain nobody liked, even that on Flash. Too. Let's yeah, bring just, that person just over. Further, anyways, we're, we're talking about Flash here, but the, the reason I bring that up is because we come back from breaks and we expect a good episode, and I did enjoy tonight's episode as well. I thought, um, you know, to John's point, to David's point, it progress the story but it didn't like hit us in terms of like sprinting to the finale right it kind of just set the foundation for us for what we can look forward to leading up to the finale and i love the juxtaposition of seeing finally the history of zoom and seeing where he's right. coming from and then comparing that to barry and what he had to endure as a child and i they looked roughly the same age as well so it's nice to kind of see that side by side you know compare barry's past to now zoom's past and you're right, the juxtaposition they did with the beginning of this episode, uh, the Harry Potter moment, as you yeah. put it, which was really cool, is really that they, they were both there. Tragedy took their mothers. One was an unknown, invisible assailant, and one was his own father, which is a little more screwed up. Mm -hmm. But I like how Barry's um, his monologue at the beginning sets it up, that the, the only difference between Zoom and Barry was that when Barry went through his crucible, when he went through his moment of pain and losing his mother as a child, 
he had a loving support system around him. Mm. I mean, and that was the difference. Whereas then they went to a, a great extent to show us that for uh, uh, Hunter Zolomon, it was completely the opposite. Not only did he not have a loving support system around him, he actually had the opposite of that. He had something very negative. He gets put into this foster thing where they didn't even care about him once he showed up or an orphanage when he got there. And right there, we see the paths of, well, Jay or Hunter or Zoom or whatever we're gonna call him, deviate from that of Barry. And I thought that was a really clever way to open up the show. And then as you were mentioning, they keep bringing it back to the, the, the issue of family. And I just really dug it. And I loved that we are getting references again to Reverb. I love, because when they when they had that first Earth 2 crossover and we saw Reverb, I mean, all of us were like, <laughs> oh, I want to see Cisco <laughs> become this. You know, we were all really excited to see it. And I love the fact that we see, you know, the doctor come out. I've still got your glasses. I've modified your glasses. Because I was thinking at the time, just modify the glasses if they don't work. Because you modify the other things. So now he's done that. We're starting to see him tap into that potential and that power. And then they follow up on that theme of tonight's episode about showing that the divergent path between Jay and Barry, mm -hmm. that even Cisco sits and thinks, what if this is my crucible moment, me discovering power? We look what happened to Earth's two, Cisco. Look what happened to Anakin. And look what I, the, I love the fact, of course, that he uses a <laughs> Star Wars. Right? The I got the midichlorians. I'm very powerful and all that kind of stuff. I just, I just loved it. And, you know, the fact that they show, one of the things I really can't stand a lot of the times in whether movies or TV shows is uh, mustache twirling villains. Mm -hmm. Like, I am evil because I'm evil. Mwahaha. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that in this one, for the but for Zoom, it's pretty cool. But even in this one, when Caitlin is saying to him, look, if you meant any of that stuff, let him go. And we see for the first time in Zoom that moment of conflict, mm -hmm. just just mm -hmm. that ever so. And to me, that sheds and opens up a whole new world of light on what you can do with Zoom now. Look, I still think Zoom's coming to his end pretty pretty quickly, I think. But still, I think for me as, as a watcher and as a fan, as a viewer, it's increased my level of appreciation for the characters and now how they're going to interact with them. Anyway, Anne, what are some of the things you appreciate about well, tonight's episode? I, I actually almost wanted Zoom to not react to Caitlyn because then it would just make him 100% villain, Whoa. no humanity whatsoever, right? But there's a glimpse of humanity in, in him, which makes me believe that that inevitably will become his weakness when they eventually defeat him. Um, but again, it's that that whole idea of Barry is essentially your um, embodiment of humanity. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Hunter Zolomon who obviously is not. And so again, I love how they built that foundation, how you're able to see how they've kind of digressed in different paths and right. how they're living. And I love David, the point that you made that every time, every episode of Flash, it always goes back to family. All the decisions that Barry makes are calculated because he, his love for his family and Hunter didn't have that. David, some it, of the things that stood out to you. I, I would pick on Wally for a little bit when he first showed up. He's like, okay, who's this kid? You know, he's fast and the furious. He's got his little drag racing. But, like, I just wasn't impressed they by him. They didn't it. handle him great right. at, at the beginning. They this didn't. is the first yeah. episode, though, where I'm like, okay, now I want to see his relationship with Joe develop. I want, yeah. I'm, I'm really invested in, in, in the family. I want to see what happens. I even like what his dad was doing with his room. This is a small thing. But my mom, when I was a kid, she used to put pictures of, uh, you know, famous like African American people from the past, you know, and you see him putting up a picture of Frederick Douglass in his room. That kind of reminded me of my relationship with my, my parents as a kid. So that was kind of touching. That was nice. A small little detail that I don't normally see in CW shows. I'm glad they actually did something like that. That was nice. Uh, just to, like the room, the warmth, like the lockers that he had there, yeah. like everything about that moment was nice. Also, too, I want to give credit to Teddy Sears as uh, Hunter Zolomon, oh, and of yeah. course, as Zoom. We always. That's right. I've never seen him like this before. I've only seen him in Masters of Sex. He was kind of this, you know, good looking doofus, you know, doctor <laughs> who was sleeping around with all the nurses and everything. I didn't really know what he could do as an actor. And to see him go kind of he's a little, little crazy, you know, he, yeah, he, he he, he, he's off. crazy. He did it really well. Psychotic. I bought it. I want to see more of that, though. John, I'm a little bit afraid, though, about what you said. I, I, I agree with you about them getting rid of Zoom by the end of the season. I wish that CW would, in the show, would learn to hold on to his villains. Like I think they got rid of Ra's al Ghul mm -hmm. way too soon in Arrow. I kind of wish they would hold on to him. Maybe not a whole next season, but at least a little bit more. I'd love to get more character development like we had in the beginning, like that flashback to see what he was going through as a kid and what made him into Zoom. Right. Well, as you've seen, the reverse Flash is still around. That's true. In That's different true. ways and in different yeah. incarnations. And you know what? This is going to sound like a negative. 
negative, mm -hmm. but I'm going to include this in my positives thing. Okay. One of the things that I really like about, about flash in its totality is the fact that Barry is such a human character. And what I mean by that is he is deeply in many ways, deeply flawed. Mm. And I like that about it because you are constantly, when you're watching the show and you see him doing these heroic things, you're realizing this is not some embodiment of perfection dude who's just always Dudley do right, make the right choice. This is a deeply flawed character who is summoning courage and bravery to do the thing. Yes, he possesses superhuman powers. But again tonight, some of Barry's flaws were on display. Mm. For instance, for being a really smart guy, Barry kind of dumb. <laughs> I mean, look, like, let's let's just rewind just before we get to what happened tonight. Let's rewind a little bit, okay? I never really understood uh, as we got near the end of season one, when he's like, "I'm going to go back in time and save my mom," and I was kind of like, "Wait a minute, you doing that? Joe could be dead when you come mm -hmm. back. Iris could be, you know, paralyzed. Uh, so and so could have gone through a massive tragedy. Blah. You could ruin the world for everybody else." But nope, I want to save my mom. So what does he do? He goes and does it, causes the uh, the singularity happens, mm -hmm. and all that nastiness happens. So you think he would have learned his lesson. A perfect character would have learned his lesson. But nope, he doesn't. I'm going to reopen the portal and go get Zoom. And everybody around him saying, Barry, that's rather stupid. <laughs> nope, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so he does it anyway. And what happens? Zoom comes through the portal. Mm -hmm. Nothing goes the way it's supposed to go. And then once again, I, and I point to this as a positive thing in, in the flaws of the character. You know, Zoom is like your speed in exchange for Wally. -E. Oh, wait a minute. So I give you my speed. You're going to kill thousands of people. And I ain't going to be able to do anything about mm -hmm. it in exchange for Wally, -E, who you'll probably end up killing anyway, even if I get give you my speed, because what's to stop you? No, I'll give you my speed anyway. Dumb. But I like the fact that he's sometimes Barry, who is so smart and so intelligent, so brave, can sometimes have bad judgment because we get to watch him grow and develop as a character. Because yeah. sometimes we get characters who are just always morally 100%, intellectually 100%, and there's no room for growth in them to grow and develop. And I like the fact that in The Flash and in Barry, we have these guys who will make mistakes and who will repeat mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, not in a world perfection where I make a mistake and I learn from it and I move on. No, he makes a mistake and sometimes he keeps going back and makes those mistakes over and over and over again. And that to me makes him oddly relatable. And I kind of like that they do that, even though very dumb. I, I still kind of <laughs> like that he did that. Anyway, let's talk about some of the things that we maybe we didn't enjoy about tonight's episode. Or some of the things we felt they could have done a little bit better with tonight's episode. Let's start with you, David. There's a thing. It's, it's a good and a bad. Uh, start with the bad, though. I, I could care less about Iris's relationship with her editor-in-chief over at the uh, newspaper. You made some comments as we were watching the show. Like, so uh, we've been talking about this. It's like, yeah, it's okay. You can date your boss. That, that's, that's completely she had, acceptable. She had you one line boss. to remind us I know, I'm like, that who she's cares? still dating him. But yeah. in that scene, I like the scene between her and Caitlin. I thought that, that was, was a nice very, scene. That was a very yeah. good scene. I mean, they're both wrestling. It's like, you know, hey, maybe Destiny is calling to me. Destiny's taking over. I have to follow my Destiny. I'm meant to be with Barry, which is a very positive, whereas all of Caitlin's relationships end in tragedy. Yeah, and I like the fact that they had Iris say what probably... All of us were thinking, mm -hmm. on Earth 2, you're married. In the future, you're married. Hello, clue in. And they showed us that that is not lost on her, that right. she's not cognizant of that those facts. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool that they did that. Just one more thing. I want to talk to you about, uh, we're talking about the Supergirl, Supergirl crossover. John, I know you said you hadn't had a chance to yes. see that yet. So in the Supergirl crossover, when Barry... Uh, first meets Supergirl, he has the uh, device on. Right. The, the big one, not, not the smaller version that they made. So he has the device on and he shows up. So there's a part in this episode where he's running so fast he disappears for a while and then he shows up. You can tell he's been gone for a while. Right. But he says, how long have I been, been gone? here? But I, I wish they would have acknowledged About the length it. of one CBS show. Yeah, That's how long it's like, so gone. there's a Supergirl and other... I wish they would have... Maybe they'll acknowledge it later, but I wish they would have at least mentioned it in that episode. Yeah. So that was a little bit of a disappointment, but it was at least cool to see how that happened because they didn't address it. It's been about almost a month since that episode aired. That's so. true. Like it's it's just been, it happened. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but from what I hear, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, yeah. But absolutely no even slight reference to it yeah. other than how long was I gone? Right. I mean, yeah, where have I been? Had I, had I not known about the Supergirl crossover, mm -hmm. I would have, and if you weren't there, I would have had no idea that mm -hmm. they were making reference to the Supergirl crossover. Yeah. Anyway, and what about you? What are some of the things that maybe they could have done a little bit better? Well, I agree. I, I love Barry's consistency in his character, but I think it also is a flaw in terms of how it affects 
the team. Mm. Mm. And so when Barry makes these, these decisions, I would think somebody in the team would be step up enough to convince him, no, what you're saying is wrong. But eventually all of them kind of back him up. And then for me, that's kind of a flaw because I feel like does he have that much leadership around the group that not Wells or not Caitlin or Cisco can step up and say, actually, Barry, let's not do that because that's a really bad idea. They all kind of just tend to follow. And so for yeah, me, yeah. I, I, I wish there was a little more dynamic like we have in Arrow where, you know, Oliver makes a decision and Diggle's like, no, you're wrong. You know, stop what you're doing. And kind of that thought process goes through Oliver's mind, whereas I feel like Barry, he makes a decision and everyone kind of just goes along with it. But everybody's it. given up. I mean, you know, Joe said he's given up on helping him. You know, he said yeah. just, just, just help him out because if he's going to go through it, at least, you know, Harrison be by, by his side and help him out. It's yeah. almost like hearing a, a neglectful parent talking about a child they've given up on. <laughs> the baby's crying. Yeah, well, he's just he's going to cry. So just give him what he wants. But that's, <laughs> that's not good parenting, just giving him what he wants. Whatever. I don't want to deal with him. Just give him what he wants. And that's kind of the way they approach Barry sometimes. And sometimes it's a little bit frustrating it's endearing for the most part but you know and i love the consistency of the character so i can't complain about that but then like i said it's just everybody else kind of just follows some great though cisco moments in the episode yeah. like yeah. going even i'm a star wars guy but even going above and beyond the star wars <laughs> reference even when they walk into that place where he ultimately reopens the uh the portal mm -hmm. he, he, he makes some patch adams jokes yeah. or whatever <laughs> it's patch adams nightmare it, it's yeah. like right out of patch adams nightmare. just like the references that come out of cisco and which i know this doesn't have anything to do with the episode but what's with this the cisco chronicles are doing a new digital series yeah it's like when, it's he's yeah. when he's alone yeah when he's alone just like what he does by himself <laughs> all right i mean that's so. Um, one side of my brain is going, "That's so stupid," and the other side of my brain is, "What was that web address again?" Yes. I'll watch it. I want to watch it. Yeah, this goes awesome because he is not the best part of the Flash, but he is consistently probably the most entertaining thing. And oh, for sure. I'd watch a ten minutes short of just Cisco spewing out a lot of Cisco isms mm -hmm. and just being Cisco. You know, it's still so funny that I was convinced that okay, if I end up liking this show, Flash. I know I'm going to hate these two. And I was talking about Cisco and Caitlin, especially Cisco. I just. Yeah, remember when they showed up in that one? I don't know if. Well, it wasn't The Flash. It was an Arrow episode. It was an Arrow. Yeah. And it was, they were, it was not good. No, and it was I have not the same good. thought, too. They, they reminded me of, and I'm sorry, I don't watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but there was a. a oh, yeah, the, the two. Guy, the Wonder Twin. Yeah. Kept the young guy. They're still on the show. Fitz and Simmons. Yeah, Fitz and Simmons. Yeah. They're both on the show. And, still. and again, I don't watch Agents, so I don't know if people love them or hate them. But essentially, I thought, oh, they're going to mm -hmm. do something very similar with these two characters, where, whereas I love Caitlin and Cisco now. Oh, I yeah. can't see the show without them. No, it is very, very difficult to, yeah. to see the show. All these different. Berlanti shows have, you know, the, the team that helps the superheroes out. You know, Arrow has it, Team Arrow, you know, and then, of course, uh, Flash. I still, Supergirl even has her team. I still think the Flash has the best team with uh, Caitlin Snow and uh, Cisco Ramon. I, I, I just like their team. I love their team. It's a very good team. Now, talking about the end of the episode, so now mm. Jay, Zoom, he's got Flash of Speed. I was waiting for a double cross to happen. Like as Barry was running on the treadmill and he's draining out his speed mm -hmm. force and then Jay injects himself. I was waiting, okay, now the twist. Or yeah, Harrison too, maybe put too. something yeah. in there. That would, or they yeah. were faking him losing right. his speed. It's mm -hmm. like, oh no, they actually went through with this dumb yeah. plan and decided <laughs> to give Zoom his speed. Um, and so now we see moving forward that Zoom now has Caitlin. Mm -hmm. And then in the little glimpse into next week's episode, it seems like, wait a minute, we're going off script now and just Barry Sloss to go out there in the Zoom uh, in the Flash outfit right. just to pretend to fight crime. What about Zoom having Caitlyn? So I don't know. I don't want to invest too much in that. But what, where do we see this going now? Now that, that Zoom's got all the power, there's nobody to stand against him, and he's got Caitlyn. First of all, why did he take Caitlyn, do you think? And where do you see next week's episode really going? I think Caitlyn, I think it's going back to family. I think he saw the images of a dad and his mom that freaked him out. I think her speech to him saying, like, if there's any humanity left in you, mm. anything that you told me was true. And in his sick, twisted mind, obviously he's killed more than 24 people. He's basically Hannibal Lecter. That's his expression of affection. I think it's just to grab her and then to explore whatever, wherever that's going to go in that sick, right. twisted way. I think that's all he knows what to do. So I think... I think he's just going to learn more about himself. I don't think this is going to be like a Darth Vader story where he can be saved or redeem himself. I feel like he's yeah, gone too. He's gone yeah, way man. too dark side. But um, it should be interesting to see. I don't know what's going to happen. My theory, I thought Wally, okay, so when he kidnapped Wally, I said, okay, this is how Wally's going to get his power. Yeah. He's going to capture Zoom. Something's going to happen. They're going to do something, take Barry's speed, and some of that speed is going to go into Wally, and he's going to become one, a Flash as well. So my theories are all upended. I have no idea what's <laughs> going to happen now. Although, uh, look, <clears throat> you brought up something mm -hmm. about going to the dark side and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. 
what wait what was that about when he's mm. got the clamp on his leg and they goes you can't stop the darkness and then the black tar goes over oh, that's not speed really. there's something else in him so there's yeah. something he's, else at play yeah, here yeah i think so and too honestly i wish um uh, i, I kind of wish that jason were here cuz maybe jason would have a <laughs> reference here for us on yeah. this but or a crazy theory because clearly, I think watching that, though, am I alone in this? That To say, okay, it's not just the Speed Force. Zoom got something else going on here. There's really? something else at play. Because that crazy a story about going in the past and taking his pa convincing his past self? His past to, re time remnant or whatever Time remnant. It. That was weird, too. They, they just kind of, like, explained that real quick and just moved on. That was fast. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I have no idea what's going to happen, which is I can, kind of a good thing. Yeah. Because now I've, I, all my theories are done, so I'm, I'm just excited to see what's going to happen next. Yeah. And where do you think next week's episode is going to go? Well, I, I totally agree with David. I think in terms of taking Caitlin, it's all that really twisted love, you know, mm. kind of thing creeping up. I don't really know what he needs to have her for <laughs> around for. But I, I do truly believe that some form of Jay or Hunter or Zoom loves Caitlin. So mm. I think obviously he took her because he just doesn't know how to express that. You know, this is the second time Caitlin's been taken. Now, remember Grodd? <laughs> Took her as Grod well because Grod yeah. had a little affection for her. Because she showed <laughs> kindness to Grod. Let that be less than Caitlin's got kids. a rough love life. Yeah, can't find does. a stable man. Don't show <laughs> kindness to anybody because bad things will happen to you. But but again, going back to that, like as she's talking to, as Caitlin is in there talking to Iris and mm -hmm. says, you do believe in destiny? Well, I do for you. Yeah. It's like, hey, insensitive moron look who you're talking mm -hmm. to i lost one husband the other guy I finally fell in love with mm -hmm. turns out to be the big arch villain of the world <laughs> okay. and i feel so bad for her at this point like when is she gonna get something good happen i don't know she's almost like um what's that character in vampire diaries that just gets shit on all the matt i think is his <laughs> name where it just every bad thing happens to this one character and he just never turns into a vampire sorry di digress but there's always <laughs> that one character in every show where mm -hmm. all the bad things just happen to that one character yeah we got we need somebody to be our crap pot yeah all, poor the, all this horrible crap is just gonna happen to this person they just gonna have to deal with yeah. it yeah but Keep you guys smiling. remind me has has barry ever lost his speed before he has right there was another time he started losing it. Well, yeah. first of all, there was when after his first fight with Zoom, mm -hmm. then he I think he had trouble getting his speed back after that. Um, and then the first time Wells tried to secretly sneak his speed out because he was slowing down, but he never lost it completely right. there. And I think there was one other time in season one. I've got an itch in my head that there was remember. one other time in season one, but I can't remember what that was about. So now. How, what is the speed force? I mean, mm -hmm. now we're going to start getting these questions. What is the speed force? Just because you, you drain that out, does that mean he's not going to be fast anymore? Or will it just regenerate in him? I mean, that's why I don't. I hope they don't get rid of Zoom too quickly because I want to know Zoom senses breaches in mm -hmm. in, in, in the uh, multiverse. Like he was just sitting in his I don't know, sitting in his corner as he does. Seems like he's always in a corner looking down somewhere. Yeah. And he senses he's like, oh, Cisco's like, come on, Cisco. Like he knew who was behind it. He knew where the breach was. Knew exactly where to go. Like how does he? He has like these Jedi. And how abilities. does he sense Cisco even being there? Like, not yeah. just the breach, but how does, how he, does he sense Cisco being in the room and be able to hear? what Cisco is saying to him right. so again could that go to the whole thing about the black tar covering his mm -hmm. eyes could could there be something else at play here I think that this episode did a great job of just raising a lot of questions and setting mm -hmm. a lot of things up I really enjoyed the episode so uh, just closing thoughts on the episode David uh, another fantastic week of the flash I think it's just it's been delivering it closes well season one closed well we have five episodes left it's been a long season, but we're almost so done. So sad, actually. I know. It's actually that's the thing. We always pick on some shows that go 22, 23 episodes, but this show, for some reason, I'm just always glued onto. It's not every episode's not perfect, like you said, John. Right. But this episode delivered, and I can't wait for the finale. And closing thoughts? Yeah, I think this episode sets us up really well for the finale. Mm -hmm. We're going to sprint to the finale yes. um, <laughs> from puns. now, but again, <laughs> it gives us the motivation for why Zoom is the way he is, and I really buy it. I love it. I mm -hmm. truly do. So I think this is a great setup, and we're up for some really good episodes where we get all the answers that we need yeah the answers are finally coming to me it was a winner of an episode i enjoyed this so much even though it wasn't like a season finale kind of thing to me it just gave depth to everything got the first time that i really appreciated wally uh, was in this episode so that was a really big step as well I, just a really good episode that i enjoyed and it did what it needed to do make me look forward even more to next week's episode so that'll do it for us guys for this episode of the flash recap show thank you so much for joining us listen jump into the comments section let us know what did you think of tonight's episode what are the things you thought they did really great what are some of the things you thought they could have done better and what are your theories for what we're going to see about this black eye stuff with zoom about what we're going to see next week leave all your thoughts in the comments section below so make sure you subscribe to this youtube channel 
channel. David, where can people follow you online? You can find me on Twitter at GriffinDE. And don't forget to tune in every Monday for our new show, TV Talk, right here with uh, Sasha Pearl Raver and our host, Josh Makuga. And of course, Anne, where can people find you? You guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat at Anne Campia. And you guys can come back on next Wednesday when Arrow comes back for the Arrow Recap Show. And of course, you can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter and on YouTube simply at John Campia. So that'll do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Keep on speeding. And until next time, bye-bye.